Hi everyone, Black Country Vlogger here. Um, this video is going to be part of a weird compilation. Compilation? I never get it right. No, I don't. Hi everybody, Black Country Vlogger here. This is going to be part of a weird compilation that I'm going to do. It all revolves around me tasting different beers again. Um, I really like trying different beers. There's so many different craft ones that are out at the moment um, that I just can't resist to just buying and trying as many as I possibly can. Now, obviously, if I was going to try every single one I bought in one day, buy beer five or six, I'm going to be on my back. So, the plan is whenever I fancy a beer, I'm going to get one out of the fridge, I'm going to film it, and let you know what I think of it. I can guarantee these are quite weird and wonderful. Um, so I'll be trying your standards like your Carlings or your Stellas or any crap like that. First one I'm going to try, and typically it's now really windy. Uh, first one I'm going to try, I actually bought from Lidl. Now Lidl seem to be doing quite a... Well they've got a promotion at the moment of uh, different craft beers. Nothing created by themselves, um, just created by different companies. This one itself is done by a brewery called Black Sheep. The drink itself is a pineapple milkshake IPA. The fact that it's a milkshake is a win for me because I really like uh, pineapple. Um, what did I say then? The fact that it's a pineapple is a bonus for me because I really like pineapple. Don't mind milkshakes. This is a 5.3% juicy tropical pineapple milkshake IPA. Um, just says brewed with fresh pineapple, so hopefully it tastes of pineapple. Let's give it a go. Standard niffage. It does smell pineapple. Um, it definitely smells of an IPA as well. That's that's a definite. And you got a small glass today because it's only a three thirty mil um, can. Should show me purring it, pairing it. How the cat purrs, I pour. So, camera's over there. So, despite the fact that it was, well, it says it's brewed with fresh pineapple and lactose, I thought it might be a bit milky. Um, but it's not, it's a nice clear IPA. Definitely smells pineapple. Let's give it a go. It's still got that hoppy flavour, which I know Dad wouldn't like, but Dad's not trying it sadly. Um, I will try and include Dad in a couple of these videos because uh, he likes trying certain beers, but he doesn't really like a lot of the craft beers. Especially if they're really hoppy, he, he finds it quite offensive to be honest. But the sweeter ones, like the um, Neapolitan ice cream one he recently tried, he really enjoyed. This one I am liking. I can taste the pineapple. It has quite a nice sweet tart aftertaste to it. It makes it really palatable. Um, because it's nice and chilled at the moment, it's going to be really easy to knock back. Not that I'm encouraging people knocking back beers, because that would be irresponsible. Um, but no, this is this is nice. This is really nice. I'm very thirsty at the moment. It's been a hot, warm, busy day. Really appreciating this. Do I taste the milkshake? No, I don't. Uh, I don't know what's supposed to make it milkshake. -y. To me, it's a pineapple IPA. Um, yeah, it's still really nice though, um, so it's a good start already, um, haven't got a clue what the next one's going to be, like I said, whenever I fancy a new random beer, I'm just going to film it, so um, who knows what the heck I'm going to pull out the fridge, but for now, uh, just want to say thanks, and it's going to be a weird video, because obviously it's going to be that's going to be um, cut to pieces and edited to pieces and I think I'm going to lose the gazebo very shortly so I'm going to go 
Thanks, I'll see you with the next beer real soon. Hi everyone, so it's time to try another beer. This will be beer number two. Uh, it's Saturday, it's bloody hot. I think it's just gone two o'clock. And if you look in the background, this is my very first and probably last DIY project. So it's a summer house. Um, yeah, it looks really good. James painted it, that's a good part. And I'm putting it together, so that's going to be the not so good part. But anyway, on to the beer. I've chosen another little one. Uh, part of the promotion, it was about 199 which is probably average for your craft beers. It's called Mangolicious. It's a 4.7% pale ale. Um, the brewer itself looks to be based in Brighton. A Lane Brew Company by the looks of it. I like my fruity flavoured pale ales so I'm quite looking forward to this. I wouldn't say the flavours are normally that strong but uh, let's give it a go. Again, it's just a 330ml one as well, so if I don't like it, it's not the end of the world. But then again, you like, no, I'm going to end up drinking it all anyway. So it's a little bit darker, a little bit more golden than the one yesterday, and it's actually uh, cloudier. So uh, let's give it a niff. I can 100%, I know I keep saying this, but I can 100% smell mango. The mango smell is really strong with this. Now, I'm a massive fan of mango. So, uh, bottoms up. That's really nice. It's really refreshing. It's been really hot today and this is really appreciated um, it's got a nice mango creamy smoothness to it but at the same time you've got a bit of a tang and you can taste the hops it's not overly hoppy for those people who don't like hoppy beers like my dad um, this is another really nice one so at the moment it's two for two uh, yeah let's try again It is really easy to drink. Um, like I said, the mango taste is very strong. It's very nice. I recommend this. Um, I might even go on the internet and look out for this um, Lane Brew Company and see what else to do. Because um, I am really impressed with this. Now, considering the ones that I did over Christmas was a real mismatch. Um, some were really good. A lot were just the same. So far, so good. But for now, I'm going to enjoy this, and I'll see you later for beer three, whenever that may be. Hi everyone, so it's time for beer three. Uh, this wasn't what I'd planned. The plan was to have beer three on the Sunday, after finishing the summer house. And I could have celebrated in the nice hot sun, with a nice cool beer. Didn't happen, because guess what? I fell off the bloody ladder. It wasn't exactly a ladder, it was like one of those, like, platform that you can stand on that raises you quite high and safely allegedly but uh no the one of the legs sheared off and i fell i really really fell um yeah it hurt i'm bruised felt sorry for myself and more importantly meant the summer house couldn't get finished and it's raining yay but you're not here for that you're here for the beer and so am i so Beer number three, here we go. It's another little one. Um, so I think it was a little bit more expensive than the other ones, it was about 249, 299, something like that. But uh, here we go, let's show you what it is. So it's called, can you see that? A wee zesty. A wee zesty. So wee zesty. Um, from a brewing company, that's a little bit vague. So it's a brewing company in Dundee, Scotland, for some of you that may not know that. The reason I got this one is it really, really interested me because it's called a lemon verbena. Actually, a lemon 
lemon, verbena, sour. Do you know what? Shall I try again? It actually calls. Ah, oh, so professional. Things never change. Lemon, verbena, slushy, sour. I love lemon. I love sour. I've never tried verbena. Some of you may have heard of a verbena before, um, especially those who go to Vegas and those who drink at the Cosmopolitan. So I'm pretty sure I'm right at the Cosmo. I think it's a chandelier bar. They have a cocktail called a verbena. Now I think the verbena fruit itself is supposed to alter the way you taste things. So I think sour things become sweet, something like that. So it seems to be a very popular thing to actually ask for when you're at the Cosmopolitan. Something I've never done before, something I'm tempted to do. But for now, I'm going to try this wee zesty verbena beer. 4%. haven't got a clue what, how this is going to go. Um, but as always, I'm willing to give it a try. I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you about this beer. It just calls itself a wee zesty, a hazy, citrusy, sour beer with a lemon verbena sherbet fizz. So this really sounds up my alley. It really, really does. It seems to encompass everything that I love about particular flavours. Sour and lemon. Have I said I like sour and lemon? It doesn't smell sour, it doesn't smell lemon, but it does smell quite bitter. But like I said, I've always got to go with the niffage just to get my first impressions. And I don't smell any lemon nor sour. And I've been talking for ages on this one. It's like, just get to the bloody tasting. So unlike the other two that I've tried, this is in a beer can, this is our standard 440ml. It's 1.8 units. Quite cloudy, because it's very cloudy. And even so as far as goes, say it's opaque. It's got a nice yellowy golden colour. Um, although if that was my urine, I'd probably want to go to the doctor's. Here we go, let's try it anyway, because I'm really waffling off of this one. It's definitely sour. Um, you can taste like lemon peel. It's a very fizzy beer as well. I should have mentioned that. It's a very, very fizzy beer. And I think that's where they're trying to get you with the uh, sherbet fizz. The sourness for me is a positive. I do wonder if a lot of people could actually tolerate this drink. It's very sour. It's very bitter. It's very fizzy. Now, because I don't know what a verbena is supposed to taste like or anything like that, I can't tell you if it's verbena -y new word. I think I really am going to have to try the verbena cocktail um, in Vegas. I'm drinking this, it's very cold. I think that probably is the best way to drink this one. I've got a feeling if it's going to be at room temperature or quite warm, it's going to be quite sickly and not very nice to drink. But I am enjoying this. Unlike the ones I tried recently, where I could have quite happily knocked it back, I'll be taking my time with this one. Um, but I would be really appreciating it if it had been Sunday, um, in the nice hot sunny weather. This would have been really cool and refreshing. It's another one that I like, so yay. Would I buy another one? I actually would. I actually would. It's very crisp. It's very refreshing. It's definitely a hot summer's day beer. Um, like I said, I ain't got a clue if it really is a verbena beer. I don't know, but it's definitely lemonade and it's definitely bitter and sour. It's bloody lovely. 
hopefully I can buy some more. I know they haven't actually got any of those left at our local, but again, I'm going to have to Google and uh, try and find a supplier for it if I want any more. But for now, I really have rambled on way too long for this beer. Um, it should have only been a like little short uh, compilation of tastings, but I just wanted to chat with you, really. There's a few more to come, at least another two for this video. But for now, I'm going to love you and leave you. And um, hopefully the next beer is going to be on Saturday, which won't mean anything for you, because it's a compilation. So Saturday for me, in about two seconds time for you. See you for now. Hi everyone. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since the last video. And as you can see, I've kind of got the summer house finished just in time for the rain. Uh, if you're wondering what the white thing is, that's the window I broke. Um, and if you're wondering what the other white thing on the far left is, that's the other window I broke. Well, I just thought I'd share with you like, what I've done, because I'm kind of proud of it. Even though I didn't know what I was doing. But let's go on to the important stuff and try another beer. Right everyone, this is going to be the penultimate beer um, of this video. It's not a funky flavour or anything like that, but it was one that actually um, caught my eye as I was just doing a bit of random shopping. What it actually is, it seems to be a combination of Brewdog and Northern Monk. Now, Northern Monk are the ones that have done the Jam Roly Poly and the Neapolitan beer that I've really liked. And I tasted a lot of the Brewdog stuff um, when I did the Countdown to Christmas. I do sometimes have a downer on brew dark just because I can, but to be honest, their beers aren't that bad at all. And they've also got a really nice place in Manchester um, where you can have a nice drink and uh, a nice meal. So yeah, I'm going to plug that place. Uh, but yeah, it's weird. It's a, is it like a competition? Is it a collaboration? Brew dog and Northern Monk? I don't actually know. I'll be honest. I didn't even know Northern Monk existed until this year, but I'm really glad I did because so far I've liked a lot of their beers. And it won't surprise you, I don't even know if I'm looking at the camera properly again. So it's called the Vermont Sessions, don't know why. It's a new session England IPA, I don't mind my IPAs at all. Brewdog vs Northern Monk, it's 5.2%. Um, not really much else to say about it. It's a nice can. Um, I think I paid 2 99 for it, so it's not super cheap. It's kind of becoming the norm now with these uh, craft beers and unique drinks and stuff like that. It's nice and cold, fresh out the fridge. <laughs> Made funny noise. And it's spraying everywhere. So that's me and the doggos. Oh, cat is. No, Moo, you can't have any. There's not really much point in your finger because it's not a funky flavour or anything. B8 smells like a very hoppy IPA. I've got my Cheddar Ales pint glass. Let's see if I can do this correctly. Already looks quite cloudy, which has kind of surprised me if I'm going to be honest. I thought it would be really clear. Oh my god. Look at the head on there, that's bloody terrible. It's going to be one of their videos, isn't it? It's really fizzy. I don't know if you can hear it. Can you see the head on that? that, that that's just embarrassing. I might as well try it. Uh, yeah, um, like I said, it's very cloudy. Now, I was expecting a clear drink. Um, two seconds, I'm going to see if there's any description. Northern England and Northern Scotland unite with this New England IPA. Transatlantic juice balm of flavour. Bright and hazy with a massive fruit aromas. Sweet and juicy with notes of tropical fruit, pineapple. And a dash of coconut. So, if anything, it is a weird flavoured one. And it should be up my street. Well, the head's gone down the best it can. Of 
got to say pineapple is quite strong with this one which is fine for me because I really like pineapple I think what I thought was hops was actually the whole tropicalness of it with the coconut and the pineapple and stuff um, it's really nice I was a little bit um, trepidatious of this one when I smelt it Yeah, it's definitely got that pineapple aroma and that pineapple flavour. The fact that it's really freezing ice cold as well, I think has been a massive um, advantage for me. I think if it's been a bit lukewarm, it might have been a bit sickly. I'm liking this. I really didn't think I'd like it after I first smelt it. Should have really read the can to see what it was. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's another really good one. Now, do I attribute it to Northern Monk or do I attribute it to uh, Brewdog? I don't know. Either way, thanks for this one. I'm going to really enjoy it. As I said, this is the last but one I'm going to try for this video because I don't want the video to go on for too long because you know what I'm like. Ramble, ramble, ramble. And you're just going to switch off after about two or three minutes. When the next one turns up, um, I'm going to give it a go, I'm really looking forward to it, I don't want to spoil it but, no spoilers but this is a bit of a spoil act, a bit of a limited edition one, good friend of mine is sending it to me, um, I'll let you know who wants it to turn up, but yeah, that's for now, bring on the next beer. is the one I've been looking forward to the most but it's also the one I'm most nervous about trying mainly because it's a limited edition it's a limited run um, and it was sent to me by a, a great chap called uh, Dave Coyne um, he's on Twitter as Dave Explores Las Vegas he's got his own YouTube channel and he's got his own blog as well so I definitely recommend uh, reading and watching those like myself, he, he likes his beers and um, very kindly sent me this limited edition uh, Brewdog beer. So what it actually is, um, so a lot of you will probably know who uh, Peter Crouch is. He's a footballer, um, very famous footballer to be honest. I'm not massively into football, um, I do follow it, I'm an Albion fan so that explains why I don't know that much about football. Um, but obviously I know who Peter Crouch is. He has his own podcast and on his podcast he's actually created a new beer, if you want to call it that. And it seems to be a combination of a lager and a stout. And he's actually called it a lout. Now I'll be honest, when I first read this I thought it was like LA out. And I thought, well what have LA done to like deserve being told to be out? It's lout, lager and stout. I love my stouts. I don't mind lagers. Um, since I've got older, I've moved away from lagers and kind of gone towards the craft ale, stouts, uh, bitters, all that kind of stuff. But don't get me wrong, I do like a good lager. So as you can see, um, you've already seen the pre-video of me unboxing the lager, lout, if you want to call it that. Really nice can. Really, really is. Um, so it's called Loud, it's got hashtag Brew Stronger and Pass the Point. I can only assume these are all related to Peter Crouch's uh, podcast. But I'll be honest, I don't listen to it because it's football and not that I don't like football, like I've said, it's just over my head. Um, it's 5.4%. Um, it doesn't really say much else about it, but as I've already said, it's half lager, half stout really looking forward to trying this 
And once again, thanks Dave. I'm really looking forward to this and I really appreciate you sending this over. <sighs> got my glass. <laughs> got me drink. If I cock this up now, I'm screwed because I probably can't get this again. Time for the niffage. It's not as strong a smell as I thought it actually would be with regards to stout. So you can already see it's got that nice dark caramelly stout colour. Doesn't seem to be poor. I can't see my face, not that you want to. Doesn't seem as thick as a stout would, if you know what I mean. Definitely looks stouty. That's a nice colour on that. Again, not getting too much of a row. I'm getting coffee. I am actually getting coffee smell from this. Uh, here we go. That is really nice. Kind of worried that because it was like a lager stout combination it would kind of water down the stoutness of it um it's got a lovely chocolatey coffee taste to it um the aftertaste is really nice um it's not as heavy as you'd expect from a stout like you know with a stout it's a really good wintry drink i feel um it's a really nice to have it when it's cold and you're in the pub and there's a nice open fire I mean, a nice meaty say that again a nice meaty stout um this is really refreshing but still got that body that you'd expect from a stout that is very nice and it's a shame that's a limited run because i could drink that for days i really could um i think the whole largeness of it probably gives it a little bit more of its um ease of drink so it's not as heavy because stouts are nice but you can't drink too many really I don't, I don't think like i said it's nice to have on a nice cold winter morning well winter evening kind of quite drinking in the morning that's irresponsible um this is really nice dave um if you have got another can at home try it because you will not be disappointed if anybody can get their hands on one I really would. This is, this would be one of my favourite drinks. But I'm not going to be able to get my hands on it much longer because it's limited run. It is, oh, it's lovely. It's easy to drink. It's got the full bodied flavour of a stout. It's beautiful. Um, I, like I said, cheddar ale, simply gorgeous. But this is, um, I don't think I read what the um, percentage was. Uh, I think it's 5.4. Yeah, it's 5.4%. Do you know what, Peter Crouch and Brew Dog? You've created a really nice drink. Um, I can't think of anything negative to say about this. Um, it's not even too gassy. Um, it's got that nice level of um, gassiness. I forgot what the fancy word is for it now. Uh, nice head on it. Um, I really like the coffee aftertones, it's it's lovely. Ah, oh, yeah, Dave. Thanks again. Uh, this is a really good way to end this video and this series. Well, not this series, you know, the four that I've been trying. Um, I'm going to really enjoy this. I really, really am. Um, yeah. If you can get your hands on one, get your hands on one. Um, yeah, I'm, I, do you know what? I'm lost for words. I really am lost for words, and I'm not normally, I'm not normally one for superlatives or anything like that. I don't even think I pronounced that right. But it's a bloody good beer, really nice lager slash stout. Um, I didn't think it would work. I thought the lager would make it taste like a piss poor stout, um, but it doesn't. Um, if anything, I think they both enhance each other. And uh, yeah, massive win for this. But for now, I want to thank you for watching this video. Um, it's been quite fun to film. 
as you all know I like trying all different beers there is another video coming up soon where I'm going to concentrate on black country ales so I'll be trying a couple of those as well uh, but for now thanks again thanks Dave please like and subscribe I'm going to go and enjoy this now um, try a bit yeah, yeah.